mountain climbing movie, okay, is that mountains have a lot of spiritual significance in the Word of God. How many of you realize that it was on a mountain that Moses had his encounters with Jehovah God and received the law? It was on a mountain that Abraham went to sacrifice his son and God instead provided a ram in the bush, a type of Christ. It was uh, to a mountain that Elijah fled when he was running from, from Jezebel and God spoke to him in a still, small voice. And it was even on a Mount Calvary where Christ was uh, crucified and died. And so mountains in the Bible have a lot of spiritual significance. And the Bible also also speaks of our life as well as a, as a journey, as a trek. And sometimes as we go down life's journey, the path sometimes seems a bit uphill. Sometimes even a mountain is in our path. I wonder today, have any of you ever felt like you were climbing a mountain? Oh, I'm not talking about climbing a physical mountain, but uh, you had to conquer some things in your life. You had to pray the thing through, and it seemed like you would never get over it, reach the summit. But because you endured, because you persevered and you pressed on, you now look back on it and you said, man, I was able to overcome that and beat that because of Jesus. Come on. Me and Jesus beat that mountain and with God's help and by God's grace I overcame. And in the kingdom, the scripture tells us that Mountains are going to stand on our path. I'd like to tell you that just because you're a Christian, you're never going to have to face any mountains, all right? That's not true. Matthew 21, 21, these are the words of Jesus. He said, assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, tell your neighbor you got to have faith. All right, you need faith. If you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done through the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. And I tell you, I really like this verse because it has that little phrase in there. If you have faith and don't doubt. You have to have faith. Uh, you have to, in order to live your life, in order to persevere and overcome, you need faith. And so, is there anyone today who sound facing some mountains? They may be physical, they may be spiritual, they may be relational, financial, ministry mountains. But I, I believe that with God's help, I'm determined to overcome the mountain. Now, Scripture tells us that we're to speak to the mountain, right? And I'll tell you, God is powerful, right? Come on, somebody give a hand clap for Jesus today. God is powerful. You can speak to the mountain and it can move. But I'll tell you, and, and I believe in that. What you say out of your mouth determines the faith that you have. But you know, sometimes there are mountains in life that you've got to speak to them over and over again. And it seems like you just climb up over that mountain one step at a time. So let me introduce our movie to you today as we start thinking about mountains today. In January 2015, American rock climbers Tommy Caldwell and Kevin Jurgensen captivated the world with their effort to climb the Dawn Wall, a seemingly impossible 3,000-foot rock face in Yosemite National Park, California. The pair lived on the sheer vertical cliff for weeks, igniting a frenzy of global media attention. But for Tommy Caldwell, the Dawn Wall was much more than just a climb. It was the culmination of a lifetime defined by overcoming obstacles. At the age of 22, this climbing prodigy was taken hostage by rebels in Kyrgyzstan. Shortly after, he lost his index finger in an accident, but resolved to come back stronger. When his marriage fell apart, he escaped the pain by fixating on the extraordinary goal of free climbing the dawn wall, blurring the line between dedication and obsession. Caldwell and his partner Jorgensen spent six years meticulously plotting and practicing their route. And so let's take a look at the dawn wall and then we're going to jump into some powerful biblical and scriptural lessons that we can learn from this. And by the way, enjoy the popcorn. Okay, so that's an introduction to the Dawn Wall. And I, I actually, I hope that you're able to see yourself 
in this movie. Now, I know some of you are thinking, I'm not going to go climb any mountain or any rock wall. That's just, I'm just not going to do it. But believe it or not, this movie is about you and I as believers because our goal is to reach the summit, right? The summit is to make heaven, and we don't do that all at once. We make the climb, we make the journey one day out at a time. And, and actually, very few of us are going to do anything at all like what these guys did. But all of us, you and me, each one of us have our own journey and our own race. And I want to say this today, that God has a hero's journey set out for you. Now, you may not realize it, but you're a hero in God's eyes. You say, what, Pastor? That's absolutely truth. the truth. Because as God looks at our lives and He sees the things that we overcome in His name, this is what He says about us. He says, we're more than a conqueror. Come on. We're more than a conqueror. And so, the truth is that God looks at us as winners. So tell your neighbor you are more than a conqueror. But the truth is that many times we can't win all by ourselves and on our own. In fact, there's a very interesting thing that happens in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, as you read the Old Testament, you're going to discover that there's a lot of what I want to call singular heroes. David goes out all by himself and fights Goliath. Elijah stands there against all the prophets of Baal and he calls down fire from heaven, okay? Uh, Moses, you know, seems to be by himself leading the children of Israel. Jeremiah stands all by himself against the sin of a, of a fallen and, 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 and a nation that refused to repent. But when you get to the New Testament, they're heroes, all right. But let me tell you something. It's not just singular heroes, but in the New Testament, guess what you find? Peter, James, and John. Paul and Timothy, Paul and Silas. How interesting is that? And actually, in fact, even as as, as in the kingdom of God, we're actually commissioned to go two by two. You'll notice that they're climbing that mountain with two guys, all right? And so a lot of times we think we're on this journey to be a conqueror. But let me tell you, actually, we do better if we understand we're not alone in this thing. Of course, we're not alone. The Lord is with us. But we also do better if we have other people go along with us on the journey. And so I've got some powerful lessons for you today. The first lesson is this. You can jot it down or if it's in your notes, you can just uh, note that. But it's number one is don't be dissuaded by a slow start. Tommy actually had a slow start in his life. Let's watch this next clip. Seems to me one of the best gifts you can give your kid is an ability to deal with adversity. Okay. I tell you, don't be dissuaded with a slow start. I'm encouraged by that because in my life, I feel like I had kind of a slow start in life at certain things. And, and I can really personally relate to this point. But how many of you realize that the way you start is not necessarily the way that you end up? Come on. Uh, we have in our culture a system, and, and we say, do the system, and if you do the system, you'll be okay. And there's a large percentage of people, you know, who do well inside of, of that system. But then there's another group of people who just don't do well in that system at all, okay? And uh, so uh, here is a, a kid named Tommy, who is, a, who is really a prodigy. I mean, he is a world-class talent, okay? And, and, and you know, and his, his teachers think that he's mentally challenged. He is an athlete that actually you'll be able to put him up beside any athlete, I think, in the entire, in the entire world. And, 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 and the system is not designed to help him at all except to tell him you're slow. And yet this guy is incredibly amazing. And, and he's going to do a feat that nobody else had even done in, in the entire world. And, and yet he doesn't even crawl before he was two. Did you catch that? Now, how many of you parents, if that would have been your kid, your son, your daughter, you would have probably said something like this. Well, I hope that they're smart 
Because it doesn't look like physically they're going to be doing much. We, 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 would have, we would have like programmed that kid's life all the way out to the, to the, to the very end. And, and that, that's a crazy thing. But how many of you realize that God doesn't put limits on people? In fact, what God delights in doing, God enjoys taking people with slow starts or those who are disadvantaged in some way and causing them to become great. This is actually a pattern that you'll find in the Word with God, okay? This is such a God story because, you see, God can raise up people in spite of their weaknesses, disadvantages, brokenness, brokenness, or what have you. Let me read a powerful scripture for you today in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse 27. It says this, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. There's just a pattern that God has, all right, where he kind of shows off his glory and his power through people that have a disadvantage in some kind of a way. And, and if you have your eyes opened up to this truth, reading the Bible becomes completely different, okay? You'll never read the Bible in the same way because really all you've got to do is just about shout out a famous person in the Bible and you will see that that guy was disadvantaged in some way. Take Abraham, for instance, right? He was a slow starter for sure. I mean, you know, he, you know, he's way up in age. He's beyond the age when guys are having, when men are having babies, okay? And his name is Abram, which means exalted father. Well, he, he had no children, okay? You know, he did have a, a child with Hagar, but, but he had no child of the promise. And then God comes along and changes his name from Abram, exalted father, to Abraham which means the father of many nations and he still doesn't have any children and Sarah his wife she's beyond the change I think everybody knows what we're talking about and yet somehow God raised them up and produced in them a powerful and a mighty nation how many of you realize a slow start means nothing in the eyes of God come on give God a big hand of praise David is the exact same way Think of David. The prophet comes into Jesse, David's father's house, and he says, I'm going to here to anoint somebody as king. And so Jesse goes, and he gets seven of his sons, and he lines them all up there. And, and the prophet walks up, and he says, uh, you, no, 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 no. All seven of them know, and he turns to Jesse, and he says, don't you have any other kids? And Jesse scratches his head for a minute and says, oh, yeah, David. He's out tending the sheep. Somebody run, go fetch David. You know, wouldn't that have a incredible, you know, rough blow to a person's self-esteem that your father didn't even think enough of you to bring you in when the prophet came. Uh, you know, he didn't think you were going to be the one that fought Goliath, let alone was a great and mighty uh, soldier for the king, and, and on and on the list goes. And, and what's interesting is that they may not have been slow starters in the word, but most Bible characters had some type of disadvantage for them that they would never become the success. Let me give you a few examples. Jacob was a cheater. Peter had a temper. Noah got drunk. Jonah, Jonah ran from God. Paul was a murderer. Gideon was insecure. Miriam was a gossip. Martha was a warrior. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Elijah was moody. Moses stuttered. And Zacchaeus was too short. And I really love this one. Lazarus, he was dead. Come on, somebody. I'm just here today to tell you that you don't have to be dissuaded by a slow start because God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Come on. Somebody give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a big hand. We need to start seeing ourselves the way God sees us because you see he doesn't see your limitations he sees your possibilities he doesn't see how you began my friend he sees the way that you could end up he doesn't see your disadvantages he sees your faith he sees your courage he sees your trust and he knows one thing that his empowerment is able to bring you to where you need to be come on somebody make a little noise in the house today and you can't climb the mountains of your life if you allow those disadvantages to hinder you. You've got to believe the Lord. 